So I know this seems so weird, even for me. I'm still on my RV journey, but I'm spending some time in Temecula, like a check in with the family, check in with the office. This is my office. Check in with stuff. I do have a puppy here somewhere. Where'd he go? Where did he go? He's been here somewhere. Oh, he's he's exploring my space. Not a good idea, I don't think, to leave him unsupervised. I will tell you that I was gone nine weeks and hadn't stepped foot in my office or seen my family. And it felt weird coming home in a way where I felt like I was gone forever, but it felt like I had never really left. Still very discombobulated, but proud of myself for the, some of the things I've had to learn how to do. Haven't really had time for the journal review, the life review. While I've been here, I overbooked myself. Wanting to have coffee with my editor, seeing clients in person, I've discovered that I like doing the uh, trailer sessions more than having to get dressed and at least put on a face of some sort, only some mascara and an actual business attire and, and come to the office. But i um, glad I did because I missed some of the faces and I got to spend some quality time with my granddaughters. 24 hours I had them and boy was it fun at the campground. We had some Christmas activities first weekend in December and I got lots of fun memories with them. First, I used to call them Granberry sleepovers. I called them Granberries, all five of my grandchildren because that's a really long story, but that's what I call them, Granberries. And so we used to have sleepovers and I would call them Granberry sleepovers, but now it's a Granberry campout. And so we actually cooked food outside, bacon and eggs. We had a campout dinner or breakfast. We went to a dance party at the campground. This is a KOA campground and lots of activities going on, lots of kids. So the weekend was full of people and then poop, they all leave and the campground's virtually empty the rest of the week that I've been there. So I showed up on Thursday to this campsite and, I've, and I'm staying until Friday. I was intending to stay until Monday, but I was a little nervous because the campsite that I booked had no, electri no electricity. Yeah, water and sewer, but no electricity. And when I first booked the spot like two months ago, I figured well, that'll be okay. I've got solar, I'll know what I'm doing. But then I got a little bit more nervous when I saw that it's going to be gloomy and cloudy and stuff like that. And it's like, how is that going to work for solar? I wasn't that confident. So when I checked in, I asked if they had any uh, cancellations in sites that had electricity. And they were able to find one that I could stay nine days in a row and not have to move. So I decided to save a little money this weekend since I have to move on Friday anyway. I made an appointment to get a safety ch inspection check done on the trailer before I head to Santa Barbara. But I did find when I connected with my friend, she has, we have a mutual friend that is building a home like up around the corner from her. And they agreed to let me use their property as a boondocking location, or we would call that mooch docking. And so I'm going to stay there for a few days and save some costs before I head to Santa Barbara. That'll just completely save my fuel costs, which is nice. But then I'm a little nervous again because it's supposed to rain. So I'm learning every day. <laughs> something, you know, like I said, it's every day is something out of the box for me, out of my comfort zone. The yesterday I spent the morning uh, taking off the propane tank. I have two propane tanks. I took off one of them because it was empty and I had to go get it refilled and then come back and put it back on my trailer. Never done that before. And since I'm no longer in Mesa with my friend Lene to show me how to do these things, I had to YouTube video and watch how to do it. And was very proud of myself and that achievement to the point where I even had to send her a text. It's okay, Brad moment. <laughs> I did this by myself. So, you know, and then today as I was leaving, there's, you know, it's like in the black tank, that's where the, we call it the poop tank. They have sensors that let you know if it's full or not, but they get clogged, they get blocked. And, and I've read about this multiple times that they're not always that uh, reliable on giving you that information on how full your tank is. So there was a treatment to do, but you have to let it sit for 12 to 24 hours for it to clean out the, the sensors and reset them. Okay, so I did that this morning. I was out before I even came into the office, emptying the black tank, doing the treatment, dumping a ton of water into the tank to let that sit for 12 hours because I'll be here for 12 hours today. I'll be gone. Brought the puppy. Very new experience for him. Saw my parents last night. It's just really... The week that I've been here, because today, this is Thursday, I've been here one week, and it's been, and it, I don't know, what do you say? I've been really busy. I just really have. 
with clients, with running back and forth, with taking care of details. Yesterday was oil change on the truck and check all the fluids. I've been taking care of some business, seeing some friends, coming to the office, taking care of the trailer situation so that I'm ready to go to Santa Barbara. I'm a little bit anxious. I have some anxiety about going to Santa Barbara. Why? Probably because I'll be very far from anybody I know for the first time. And it's about four, it's about four and a half hour drive probably from here. And I'm going to do it in the one day, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave early in the morning and drive a couple hours, take a break, and then drive the rest of the way and pray that it's not raining. Because if it's raining, that will definitely cause me to stop for a while. Ooh, ooh, dog's getting a little obnoxious in here. Yeah, I knocked over my shand. Great. What are you doing over there? I got him a harness. Now I don't have to feel like he's choking. You want to come up and say hi to our friends? Look, he's so big now. He's getting huge. He's a big dog, but I love him. He's a great, he's a great companion, a great pal. Um, like I said, I haven't had time to do the journal project. I'm actually looking forward to the time in Santa Barbara because I won't have the distractions of wanting to go see people or wanting to take care of business because I've already taken care of the stuff for the trailer that I need to take care of. I had a, a friend from a radio station come down to see me also on Sunday. So we had a nice day in Old Town Temecula. And then she had invited me to her radio station's board of directors Christmas party. So I drove up to Riverside to go and attend that. How was it? What do I seek? I'm not sure yet. We'll see. We'll see how all of that develops. I've known this woman for 20 years with our FCC compliance business. We believe inspected her radio station was every three years. So what would that be for 20 years? That's going to be six or seven times, you know. And, and she was intrigued to know that I have a bunch of Fox television stations that I'm working on right now as an inspection. It's not like I'm promoting the Orchard Media Services or the, or the FCC compliance business. It's just based on referral. If they call and they want it, I'll do it. But uh, I'm not marketing it. I'm ha very happy being a psychotherapist. Well, the thing is, is that I have all these creative energies. And as I was sharing with my editor what I was working on with the journals and extracting characters and scenes and dialogue and insights for stories, the conversation was, but what do I do with them when I write them? That's, this is part of what I know. I knew this before, but I know this even more deeply. Self-promotion is my weakest point. And it's, no, it's not something that I want to improve upon. I don't like self-promotion. It makes me very uncomfortable, probably from a lot of stuff in my past, in my youth, in my, my, my background. It's that kind of that question of who do you think you are? or what makes you so special, those kinds of things that I, I tend to ask. But the thing is that when you are the product, it's not even just about me being out there in the community. I'm confident with what I do. But the actual is, I wrote this really great book, or I have this really great podcast, or I can really help you do this, makes me uncomfortable. And so I don't know what the hap will happen with the books. Sure, I can write them, I can have them edited, I can publish self-publish them, I can have cre covers created. But then when it comes time to marketing it, you got to do a lot of sales. And that's another area where I'm just, I don't like it. I've done the advertising sales for 20 years from the time I was 16 until I was 40 or whatever. And, and it was not my favorite part of the radio business. No, I liked the radio business, but I didn't like selling advertising. So I, this is one thing that I, I put out into the universe. I would, I need representation. I need a salesperson that's going to help promote the books that I'm going to write. I, as far as speaking, going out and doing speaking engagements, I don't know yet. I still have a very interesting um, email about a conference in August in New Mexico, a Creativity and Madness. And it's like a psychotherapy conference, but it's about using art and your creativity to, to get healed. Anyway, and so I thought about calling them and asking them, are you interested in my video blogs as, as I go through this journal project? And as a psychotherapist, but also present with the young woman who's writing these emotions and feelings, but also as the, the woman who's wise now, wiser now, and knows the outcomes. It's like this triangular little therapeutic method and that I'm utilizing. My psychotherapist finds it very intriguing and interesting, and any of my clients that I'm, or cl and friends that I'm sharing that I'm doing this, they find it interesting because who really, who do you know that has documentation of majority of their life? And I go through it and I'm just like, oh, God, you, you poor girl. 
but it's interesting because it just it's not hurting me. It's not stirring up sad emotions. It's more I, I'm looking at it from the lens of a therapist. I already know what the outcome is. I already know what happened there. I already know the what's going to happen. It's just the stuff that's going on in my life right now that I don't know the answers to. But every, but all of the stuff that's already in the past, like I said before, it's like reading the the last chapter of a book and knowing how it ends, and then going back and reading the book. I don't have any. I don't have. I, do, I have a lot of emotional attachment to some of the things that happen. And yes, it's like when I review it, it's like, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, the poor, it's like with my children and the abandonment of their dad, behaviors of working with my parents, realizing how triangulated and meshed I was with my parents my entire life until I became a therapist. But because of work and financial and just feeling obligated a lot to stay with them. And a lot of it had to do with losing brothers. You know, you feel that no parent should lose their, should bury their children. My mom and dad had buried two, two sons. So as the youngest and the only girl feeling obligated that I have to be, I have to remain present for them so that they don't grieve too much. But neglecting my own life, my own needs, it's like, what is my purpose? Was I really just born to manage my parents? Or was I really just born to be a mother to these children? And then once they're adults, then what am I? Who am I? So I, my I, identity crisis I pretty much my identity was crushed before I left, and I still haven't figured out who I am yet. I'm just very grateful to be able to work remotely and go where I want to go. And I love my little trailer. I love my little office. I've got a picture now. Uh, I actually saw where this is. I actually went there. That was really amazing. This picture has been in my office now for a year and a half. And I, it's just a poster. And I was searching the internet. I knew I wanted to have this big picture in my office because I don't have any windows. And I wanted something that was huge that would take up the whole wall that would look like a picture window. And I wanted it to be of something in Sedona. So I was just searching the internet for pictures and find a poster of the biggest one. And this is the one that I chose for my office. And then lo and behold, I take a shamanic land journey with Lene and Frankie. And we talked about that. And this is where we end up. And so now I have an actual picture that I took of the same thing. And then my friend was like, you should blow that picture up now and put it in your office. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because this one's already professionally framed and it's good. So what is the purpose of today's video is just to update. I was able to come in and take care of some business and take care of some things that were nagging at me. I've got my Apple a day on radio stations and I knew I was running. They were running out. I have to share them in Dropbox so that they can just go and download them or upload them. And I knew that they were only in there until December 31st. So I came in and I took care of that and I've got them done through the end of March. So that's nice. So all the radio stations have my Apple a day access through March. It's just been taking care of business. Honestly, when you're living in a trailer, it's easy to, it's easy to forget about it. It's because every day is camping. Sometimes I just, I just stay in my pajamas day because no one's going to see me. And it's, it's a different life. And I don't know what to expect when I go up to Santa Barbara. I know I have this, like, I definitely want to be walking the beach. I'm going to be in Santa Barbara for two weeks until after Christmas. And then I'm going to move up to about 45 minutes up the highway up to Oceano, which is near Pismo Beach. I wanted to stay in Pismo Beach, but it's booked up for the holidays. So I found this other place. And I don't really know what to expect, but I do know that I want to finish with my journal readings. I want to get, I'm tired of carrying my past around with me. And that is one of the uh, visuals that I've really learned is that I am carrying my past around with me with my journals. I've been carrying these journals around my entire life in a box in my closet. And the boxes just get bigger and bigger as I transition. And even as I review my journals, I'm reading where I've reviewed my journals regarding some sort of issue. And I'm coming up with the same conclusions, but I'm also ready to let them go. I really am. I'm ready just to, I call this a sequel. This is not a new chapter in my life. This is the sequel, Kelly Orchard. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I am literally letting God lead me, and it's not scary. However, I do have anxiety that I pray about a lot. He's digging in the trash. I do have anxiety, but that's just my safety, not the direction. And then, so I just pray before I leave. Every time I do anything, it's just, I'm, okay, Lord, I need your help. All right, when we travel, please share, have your angels come and, and surround the trailer and the truck so that we're safe on the highway and keep me alert and open and ready to, you know, be safe on the highway. So 
More to come. I've got clients all day today, my own therapy session. Plus, I'm doing a supervision session for an intern that's here at Michelle's place. And then this is my last day here, and I won't be back until after New Year's. Will I see my family for Christmas? I'm not sure. That really depends on if my daughter, who's here in California, wants to come out to Santa Barbara and see me. I'm doing, I'm literally taking a sabbatical from any and all obligatory activities that, that I feel that I need to break from. It's, it's my self-healing process. I said before that in order for healing to occur, you have to deliberately set your intentions to heal. You can't leave a gaping wound open and expect that it's going to heal on its own without there being major scar tissue and difficulties later. It's the same for your emotional state and your mental state. I've got some grief issues. I've got some sad things that have happened, some trauma that has been resurfaced. And I've got aging parents who I saw them. I saw my mom and dad for my dad's 85th birthday. I took them dinner and some cupcakes and some items for the refrigerator. There's the dog out there for them to meet them. And I can see their decline. And it, more so than it was when they were living with me. Dad's Parkinson's is progressing. And I watched my mom barely able to maneuver around any furniture. And I'm trying to make sure that the puppy's not going to tear them up. But that was a challenge too. I am literally out in the world just taking care of me. And sometimes battling whether or not it's the right thing to do. Be just taking care of me right now. But then on the other hand of the other side of that, it's, but it is the only thing that I can do right now because I've never really just taken care of me. I've been taking care of either my parents or my children my entire life. And so this was part of my existential crisis. Who am I without all of these people? And they say that we count on our family when we go through hard times, but I'm doing the hard things right now and I'm doing it alone. Why? For a number of reasons, but one of them is it must be done by yourself. If you really want to get close to God, you got to take some time away from all the distractions. I was started a movie last night, and I don't know how how good it is. It, I, I I fell asleep, but but I was it, but it was basically just scripture. But it was a, it was a movie called G, the 40, 40 Day Temptation of Christ. It, it was the premise was the forty days that he was out in the wilderness before he started his ministry, and. <laughs> He was spending time alone with God. And honestly, those are some of the prayers that I've had. Just you have to get alone with God and just pray for him to guide you. And that is where I am at right now. Just really appreciating sunrises and sunsets and the new skills that I'm developing that are completely out of the box for me, out of my comfort zone. Never in my life did I believe that I was going to be mechanically inclined to the point where I wouldn't pull in a trailer and hooking it up to my truck and changing propane tanks and dumping black tanks and all of that. Um, I had a dad and three older brothers. That, and so never, not that I've camped all my life, that I've never been the one that's responsible for the rig. It was usually just go, go clean the kitchen or go cook, 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 fix me a sandwich or just stay out of the way until I'm done. And it's not because I wasn't capable. It was just that it wasn't necessary for me to step in and help. Just like when I was a kid, it wasn't necessary for me to learn to mow the lawn. But I certainly pulled weeds. I didn't fix the sprinklers, but I brought them lemon eat. So, you know, it's, it, you could say rolls or whatever, but it, that was the 70s. So here I am, 59 years old, and doing it. And now I got to start sessions. Okay, so this is a just a follow-up from the office confession. This is the last morning here out at Vale Lake, KOA. Um, the sun is shining on me. It's beautiful. I had a nice hot shower. It'll be the last one with washing my hair and everything until I get up to Santa Barbara on Monday. This is just me, fresh face, no makeup, clean clothes, <laughs> getting ready to break down camp. Dog is wandering around enjoying the sunshine while I just do a little update. So how was my time here? I realized this morning as I woke up, that you know, being back in the old environment has created a lot of anxiety again for me. The insight that I got from this time here is that you can get caught getting trapped back into old emotional and behavior patterns when you are when you go back to that familiar territory. And it's normal. It's like falling off that wagon. I fell off the anxiety wagon a little bit. 
And I've had to pray a lot about it and trust that God's got me and that he has me on this new journey for a purpose and not to harm me. So that is, I think, the strongest lesson that I have learned, that in this crazy world, when you go back to your old stomping grounds, you are, you're definitely going to get some triggers and some memories that'll pop up. And that's what I had. But I had a nice visit with my grandchildren, my parents, some friends, my office. I got to see some clients in person. Some of them still managed to stay on the phone. I did realize that I like my remote working and trailer life. And the busyness of what my life was like this past week was a bit overwhelming. I'm no longer in that mode of getting out there and hustling, which is not a bad thing for me, I've, actually. I think I've been literally hustling my entire adult life. And so this is a complete shift for me. So it was eye-opening to go back and to realize that I didn't have the time to see everybody who might be interested in what my journey is all about. But I guess that's the purpose for these videos is just to document it. I am looking forward to getting back into my journal, my life review. And if there's going to be rainy days up there in Santa Barbara, then I'll just look at that as God saying, stay in the trailer and read your stuff. Because actually there's other things that I want to be studying. I want to, there's a resonance science course that I want to take about the earth's vibrations. And there's some neuroscience things I want to take and some quantum physics things I want to look into, books that I've been carrying around that I still want to read. So there's other things that I want to be doing. But I, this project is super important for me for a number of reasons. Number one, I want to get through the whole life review. I want to get all these documents and notes done. And I want to get all these journals burned and out of my closet for a, a lot of reasons, but also for the physical space. I want them out of my closet. I don't want to be carrying around my past anymore, any longer. I don't want to be dragging it along with me. So even just the metaphor of it is, is it's time for it to go. And so I really want to kind of put a fast track on it during the next few weeks. So that is my update. So anyway, we'll see what happens. So the adventures of Kelly and Kismet continue. See you soon.